This is the IBC feeder that I used of the style that you see on the internet, you know, Pinterest, Facebook, that sort of thing. And I was worried about strangulation risk, and so I welded on a whole bunch of extra bars here just to make sure that nobody could get their head through. And as bad luck would have it, I did have a goat that was able to get their head through this. It's a pretty small little opening, but they were able to get their head through here and she actually strangled herself and uh, died. So uh, I don't trust these anymore. I don't use this style, this um, kind of IBC uh, manger style. So this is a big improvement that I'll show you over the manger style that I'll show you in this video. Up, uh, I've got this IBC, just 275 gallon tank. I use these for everything, pretty much. You'll see them everywhere in my videos. And I had a creep feed. I was using this as a creep feeder, which is a way of keeping adult animals out and allowing small animals in. So I would put hay and stuff in the back of this thing. And I wanted to let the small animals in so they could eat it, but keep the large animals out. So I have this little doorway here. Turns out this doorway is way too large and animals got in there. The larger animals got in there, no problem. So I scrapped this. Um, I have other ways of handling creep feeders now. Um, I'm going to turn this now into a feeder for all animals. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this out here, make a nice large window and I'll have a board. Well, you'll, you'll see. You'll see how it plays out. So I've got this um, top part marked out, cut this black line all the way around, and I'm going to cut the IBC, cut that top quarter off. That's going to become a lid. The lid will prevent the animals from sticking their heads through the bars of the feeder, which will reduce strangulation risk. And then I have these top rails. I'm going to put these down one level down to this um, horizontal bar here, and that will serve as a way of keeping the lid from falling into the IBC. So you can see here in the video, I'm using bolt cutters to cut the IBC, and I've found that to be the definitely the best and quickest way to cut IBCs. Yeah, I've used grinders, I've used Sawzall, and the bolt cutters are just so fast and so easy, especially those large bolt cutters that I have that give you a ton of leverage. The only problem with the bolt cutters is that it does leave some really sharp edges. And so you do have to kind of handle those edges, uh, depending on the application. You may need to grind them down. You may need to sand them down. And then I try something later on in the video for dealing with those sharp edges that worked out really nicely. So you'll see that coming up here in just a second. So yeah, here you can see I'm using a uh, propane torch and I'm just melting the uh, spot welds there. So I'm just going through and cutting out anything with sharp edges here. Uh, this is, you know, guaranteed to really, really hurt a goat or a sheep if I'm not careful. So um, I'm just taking the torch and heating up these spot welds so that I can basically rip the, these pieces of sharp metal off. So the torch worked out really well. There were still some sharp burrs on there. And I was able to sand that off with just some, you know, medium grit sandpaper. It came off just fine and kind of got everything smoothed out. You can see how this is turning out. I've got this window right here. That's where the food's going to be accessible to the animals. And then I'm going to be putting a board in at a slant. And that board will basically allow the food to continue to be pushed for, uh, forward as the animals eat in front. The food will slide down along that board to basically always be at the front here so they don't have to climb in to the bin to actually get the food out that they're trying to eat. Got the top cut off so this is where the food will be loaded. I'll have the board going down at an angle like this. So one thing about this IBC project is that uh, I'm using this IBC with a wooden pallet. If, if you're buying an IBC for the first time, I highly recommend that you avoid IBCs that have a wooden pallet. Got this board that I'm setting up to be at this angle that'll feed all of the um, produce that I pour in here down to the front opening where the animals will eat. And so I've cut out these front corners so that it'll nestle down in the front corners there. And I'm also going to cut out the back corners with little circular cuts there as well. 
And then I'm also going to set up some rails along the sides. And this will rest along those rails. And then I'm also gonna um, support it in the middle using some you know, two by fours or something that'll give it some structural stability in the middle because it's gonna have hundreds of pounds of produce on top of it. So if I just had this little quarter inch piece of plywood here, it would literally just buckle under the strength, under, under the strain of the uh, produce on top of it. So I need to put some uh, two by fours and what have you there to buttress and give it some strength. So you can see the wood fits in there really nicely. And now I just need to install the rails. So I'll do some rails along the sides and also a rail along the back. Here I'm just marking out the IBC so I know where the rails need to go for the board to fit nicely on top of the rails. And the plastic on the IBC seemed to hold those rails just fine. And so if your plastic is brittle, it would probably just break. So if, you're, if your IBC is too old or if your IBC is brittle or something, this may not work without some additional things like maybe some large washers, for example, uh, to prevent the plastic from breaking. But luckily this plastic was nice and soft and I was able to just screw those rails straight into the plastic. These boards here are going to be used to build a support structure for the board so that the weight of the produce on top of it will not cause the board to buckle. And so uh, you'll see I kind of make a little arrangement of these boards um, to go on the back side of the plywood. And those are there to just, like I said, support the plywood so that it doesn't buckle under the weight. All right, so they're putting on the finishing touches for those wooden supports. Just putting this last one on. And now pretty much that whole entire board has uh, supports all the way along it, and that'll prevent it from buckling. All right, when I put it into the IBC, everything went really well. I could stomp on it, jump on it, put all my weight on it, and I didn't sense any weakness and definitely didn't feel like it was going to buckle. So here I'm just putting in the um, rails on top so that the lid doesn't fall in. And then I'm cutting out these little holes at the bottom here, and that's to allow for some airflow, because at the bottom, the, the slanted wooden board leaves an air gap at the bottom. So if you get a bunch of moisture and plant debris and stuff down there, um, it's, it's going to start rotting. And so I put those little air holes in the bottom to basically allow for plenty of ventilation so that whatever moisture is down there will be able to escape and it won't start rotting. And here I am just delivering it to the goat paddock. This is their sacrifice paddock for the summer. And of course, they're all curious about it. And this is me loading, um, this is me loading produce into the feeder and it's all sliding from back to front just like I expected. And it worked out really well. Uh, so far, so good on this thing, I'm sure. I'll go through iterations on the design, but I'd call it a success so far. Uh, it's not without its problems though, so you'll see later in the video, I take a little spill here. And, uh, you know, I don't encourage you guys to make one of these until it's ready, because this is what could happen.